I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? This is Matt to once again. about to another video. This is another paid request, this time for frame by frame. Thank you so much for that. For those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos, feel free to send them either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. I'll get to them as soon as I can. It could be for pretty much anything. Any video, review, topic, reaction, re-review, randomness, what have you. And this is for Stranger Things Season 2, Episode 4. Now... Like I said in season one, I didn't mind season one, but I thought there was stuff that just stretched out. I like the way season two began. Now we're getting to the point where it feels like things are being stretched out and it's like, can we hurry this up? This is again, to me, an issue with you take stories that I think would work better in a miniseries format and stretching them into eight, nine episodes. Because we're in episode four. And honestly, I feel like I could have skipped this episode and not miss much of a thing. Or if you if this was in a movie, there's maybe five minutes worth of stuff. The kid will, he's changing, somewhat possessed. His body needs the cold. I thought the kid did a good job acting wise. I would say that was the best part of this episode. Maybe 11. Her finding out about her mom. Trying to contact her mom. And this black void. And then her mom disappears. Descended race. As if Thanos did a snap. And she's like no mom. That was a nice moment. Again five six. Five six minutes. Other than that. A lot of stuff in this that I did not care about, and I don't know if this would be a rant, but I could say this is might be my least f favorite episode so far. This episode was almost completely fucking pointless. At least for me. <clears throat> and then also just a lot of annoying stuff. Will's acting strangely. We get what's going on, but the characters don't. David Harbour, who plays the top hopper, he's yelling at Eleven, Why did you go out? You could be caught. And he's yelling at a girl. By the way, buddy, you're yelling at a girl that has the powers of Terry, you fucking moron. And you won't let her go, you won't stop, you won't think. <laughs> and then, of course, she's throwing shit at you, and you're even going, <laughs> You fucking moron, she's going to blow your fucking head up like a... What a water balloon. Come on, man. It makes me dislike the Hopper character because it may I get his point that he wants to keep the girls safe, but there's smarter ways of doing it. And this was just it made the character seem idiotic and fucking dumb. Like we need to get eleven by herself, as in 
she wants to contact her mom because she doesn't want to be here. And then this is, I'm guessing she's going to go off and probably get back to the beginning of episode one, the other person with the powers. I'm sure that's coming up. So let's find convenient or there's another word I'm thinking of. Convenient is not the right word, but there's a, like, really, that's what you're doing? It's like, oh, I didn't go see Mike because some random girl was circling him in a gym and did nothing else. That's why Eleven, and I've heard that Eleven doesn't even meet the other kids till the end of the season? Get the fuck out of here. This is fucking stretching things. Unneeded. It didn't need to be nine fucking episodes then. How about five? Five strong ones instead of shit like this where, oh, here's this kid Dustin's got this pet. I'm like, come on, kid. You know this is a fucking monster from the upside down world. It looks like nothing in our world. It looks totally, fucking totally alien or demonic or whatever adjective you want to describe this thing it's not really an adjective but you know there's something wrong with this and then it goes and eats your cat unless he fucking goes up and says hey this motherfucker ate my cat the house cat here you go then he's a fucking idiot just like Harbor's a fucking idiot the hopper I mean David Harbor's character I don't give a fuck about the older sister and uh, Will's older brother wanting to tell the parents of Barb. I don't give a fuck about Barb. I've talked about this about Barb. Fuck the shit. I don't care about the storyline. I don't care about this older sister character. What am, why am I supposed to give a shit? Some people say they like her. Why? What is there to like about her? Her storyline could be completely edited and it would only make it better with pacing. Nothing of the big picture story would be lost if her character was completely deleted. She's annoying, she's irritating, at times she's bitchy. Her and the other guy get caught by the agents, including Paul Reiser, who fucking shows him around the lab, and then they leave, and then the girl had a fucking tape recorder the size of a fucking VHS tape, and no one in the military thought, hmm, she got a bag, maybe we should check it, what if she has a gun? What if she has a nightstick? A dipstick? A fucking toothpick? How about we check the fucking bag? Well, if you're letting these people into our facility that's got guards and armed guards and is very hush hush. I mean, what if she had a bomb? What if she had a gun? I mean, what if she have a toothpick, a dipstick, a night... A nightlight. Well, how, you don't know what the fuck was in the bag. You look through it. Oh, what's this? A tape recorder? Uh-huh. <laughs> Again, to me, this lazy writing. Lazy writing. We need to find a way for her to get proof. So we let the agents literally invite these two into our secret, secret lab. Here's a big fucking bag she's tearing. We're not going to look at it at all, which is dumbfounding airport security is more fucking advanced than this apparently at least they have an x-ray machine that you have to put your shit in not this and so now you know they got the proof and I'm whatever I don't care the little kid will and him trying to deal with this and telling his, his mom went on a writer and then at times David Harbour the sheriff the little kid Will did a good job portraying the emotion and he's in between. He's not fully possessed, but he's like he can see this stuff and he's drawing these things. And Winona Ryder realizes, wait, if you put these drawings together and then David Harbour, it's vines, it's vines. Um, Lucas, the, the black kid, pretty much again, maybe him and Max... The girl is pissed that, why don't you guys tell me anything? It's four episodes in. I don't know shit about Max. Other than she likes Dig Dud and she has an asshole older brother. 
or stepbrother, whatever the fuck he is. Brother, stepbrother, whatever. That's all I know about her. She likes Did Dug, the video game, and this relative who picks her up is an asshole. Looks like an abusive asshole. That's all I know about her. Four episodes in of this nine episode. That's the thing. With a regular TV show, you do the season. Seasons are maybe 20, 25, 26 episodes. And you know, maybe you did another season. And sometimes they're just one shots. Other times they do have a storyline in the background dealing with the characters. Here, they're movies. They're movies, but movies stretched out to nine episodes. I mean, you, t you cut out, each one's like 50 minutes long, so not quite nine hours, but, I don't know, eight, maybe seven and a half, sevens, like seven, seven and a half hour movies that honestly could be maybe four hours at most. That's the issue I have with this stuff, is stuff gets stretched, and... I did. What I said pretty much is what happens. Eleven, he's not reuniting with Mike for stupid bullshit reasons. David Harbour is yelling at Eleven. I get that he's worried, but the way he's doing it is completely nonsensical and idiotic. By the way, buddy, you fucked her over last season and turned it over to the agents. Like, you told them where her position was. Fuck face. Dustin's being an idiot. This creature shed his skin and became a and ate the house cat. He's being a fucking moron. The one kid, Mike, he does nothing in this episode. Will, he gives the best performance in the episode. Eleven, like, wants to contact her mom and then she disappears and then she cries, which I'm sure will lead her to go on her journey. And then they didn't go back to the beginning of episode one. It ends with Hopper digging. Boom, he's in these tunnels and it's part of the upside down world. I don't care. All I got was so far in four episodes. I, I did it. You can't tell the whole story in the first two episodes. But again... Did this need to be nine episodes? Could it be six episodes? Could it be seven? Could it be five episodes? It adds all this shit that I don't care about. Okay, Dustin has his little thing. This creature. When you extend it more and more, it makes the character look dumber and dumber and dumber. Like, when you don't get through your fucking thick head that this creature is a part of the upside down world and there's horrible shit going on. Oh, David Harbour. Well, we can't have Eleven connect with the kids. So we got to go through these bullshit reasons where, oh, she saw Mike and this one girl just steepboarding around him. Not kissing, not hugging, not shaking hands, not fucking... Or... or it's fucking thin. It's fucking superficial thin. Okay? It's Alan McBeal thin. It's bullshit. And then again, the tape recorder. No one would check her shit. What if she had a, again? What if she had a bomb? What if she had anything? What if she had lollipop? Share with the rest. It, but no, convenience. Conveniently enough, they don't check it. So then she has this fucking tape recorder. This message. I don't give a fuck about Barb. Some people said, well, actually, people like the character, and they said hashtag justice for Barb. Really? Okay, I would ask those people name five things about Barb that does have to do with her dying and what she looks like. Name five things about the character of Barb. If you can't name five things, how about three things? How about three things? So I don't give a fuck about that. I didn't like this episode. So I guess this is, yeah, this is more of a rant. So fuck, I'll tell it a rant. I, it became more of a rant the more I think about it. Sean Astin, who I've liked, he's not in this episode. The only positive is Will, the, the kid, and his performance. Of, he's not quite sure what's going on, and it's called, the episode is even called Will the Wise. 
and he gave a solid performance. Again, in that one scene where Eleven sees her mom, and then she has a little emotional breakdown, I like that scene as well. The rest of it, I, I could do without. And honestly, if you edited this into a movie, you keep the stuff with Will, you keep the bit with Eleven, and maybe the very end where he finds the upside down world. There you go. Uh, maybe to be fair, hey, he saw this creature kill the house cat. That will be finally Dustin's awakening that something's going on as I like splashing cold water on someone to wake him up. So to be fair, maybe that's what it had to take. To be fair. If it doesn't, then we're in the world of shit. So yeah, I I was not a fan of this episode. For me, this is the weakest episode so far of season two. And the first four, I mean the first three episodes, I have not minded. Now we're really stretching it. And really, like, almost at a stalemate. So, that's just my opinion. So, we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.